Good morning, everyone, and thanks for uh, joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar. Um, take a look here on the economic calendar. We did go in and uh, get, um, <clears throat> most recently, the French CPI. We did get, also get German um, GDP numbers, which came in actually at 1.5% um, for German data. Spanish GDP, um, bear with me, also just came about, just uh, came across, uh, which came in at 2.8%. And let's see, also uh, Italian GDP, which came at 2.7%. Looking out, um, <clears throat> we do get uh, Eurozone uh, CPI data. That'll be out at the top of this uh, next hour, along with the Eurozone GDP. And as we come into the stage, we will get uh, core PCE data with employment cost. And we do get Canadian GDP and PPI. Take a look here on the charts. We finally did go and see these markets break. Actually, they were holding up very well until we got the uh, uh, earnings uh, information from Amazon. And that came in as a disappointment. It actually, um, they said that really the reason that they didn't meet or partially didn't meet uh, expectations or figures was because of uh, increased shipping costs. But nonetheless, it disappointed. And considering how far we've come with really not much or not really not much, just really no no uh, correction whatsoever to speak of. I mean, we saw a little bit of a downdraft uh, last week, but then we just quickly jumped into it. And um, you can see here, that wasn't not really what you'd call a correction there, a little bit of a dip. But we've, we've suddenly come off, um, you know, since it, since it closed, and then um, we continue that in uh, Asia. And finally, we start to settle a little bit, and we here, here we are trying to push, push a little bit higher now. And you can see that big drop in uh, Amazon. Take a look across on uh, FX. Nice little move. And we have uh, finally gone above 1875 here in the euro. Take a look here at the uh, cable. Same thing, a continued move here in cable as a doctor, as a dollar has gone and uh, faded back from its levels. Aussie, uh, just a little bit firmer, nothing to write home about, as they say. And the dollar yen, also a little bit on the weak, seat, weak side. And then you can see here with the dollar index. Take a look at the S&Ps. Well, certainly not the same type of move that we've seen here in NASDAQ, but still definitely a good little pullback. We'd actually gone to um, highs here um, yesterday, new all-time highs before falling apart. And look, here we are revisiting or have just about revisited that 43.68. And then a quick look in gold. Uh, we did want to push up here in gold after all. Look at that. We were looking for this to go on. And we remember we said we're looking for this to push higher, really more so on just stops that would push this market higher. And certainly we did. We did go on and see that yesterday with the market trading as high as 1838.
So starting hard hit off here with the Euro. We have this key resistance level here at 1875. We finally were above that right now. You can see that. As and that's going to be the key. We actually closed above it uh, yesterday, and we're kind of in a very tight range, adding on to it, uh, which which is key now that we've gotten above it. That's actually a good sign, at least if for those that are bullish in the euro. Uh, looking at that now, our bias chart support. Let's go on take a little two hour. Come back to the daily. I didn't really see anything clear the two two hour, but what I like too is right here. But really, if you see right here coming across here, that's probably going to be the closest that we have. Actually, if you drop down to this body right there, that's going to be 1834. So our support now is going to be 1834. And resistance. The next key area is going to be right here, 1924. Had this little range here, 1924 to 39, but right now we're looking at 1924. And we still remain bearish. I mean, it looks like if we can close today above 1875, that's key so that we don't slip back. But uh, it's, we're still bearish. Moving on to the cable. We've continued that run here. And, you know, here was our resistance here. This body at 3963. Right there. And we closed essentially almost there we closed yesterday it looks like it at 39 59 39 60 there's that resistance at 39 63 and we're actually pressing above it take a look at this body right here confluence it almost with this wick here and right here That'd be 39.85, 39 We're starting to turn, turn this around now uh, for the bears, but we'll see how we close today. As long as we don't slip back below 139, we'll, we'll definitely start to turn that thing around. Now, looking as far as support. Let me right there, 3867. 3867. And moving on to the Aussie dollar. Well, no changes here. You can see we're just trading in a super tight range. Yesterday wasn't much, although we closed a little bit higher, but definitely, as I said, nothing to write home about. No changes here is the key is going to be this weekly level. 74.27. And the downside, 73.27. So no changes there. On to the dollar yen.
we had 931 they were looking for uh, as support for yesterday. We got as low as 943, but the low today has been 934. So no changes here. I still like the 931. On the upside, the only difference is we'll pull back on the resistance realistically where we can go to. And we're going to be looking at the body right here, which confluences almost with the wick. Well, that's where we came up with the 10, 12, but we're a long ways away from that. Um, we're going to move it to this body right here. That's not even much of a change, but it is a little bit, 10, 07. We'll just stick to the technicals on that. Doesn't look like we'd be heading there anytime soon. With that, we'll go and move into the cash stall index. And yeah, this thing, you know, we were at that 92.83 and it just kept trying to push above and we just kept getting stuck, anchored to that level. So it's not too much of a surprise that it made it easier for us to slip. Because when we when we got here to the breakout level, we really couldn't do much with it. We had one day we pushed above it, but we closed towards the lower end. The next day we pressed lower. Here we closed right at 92.83, which potentially would have been a hammer. Then we closed right just above it in a very, very tight range. So really left the market susceptible, I guess you'd say, for a pullback. Uh, you can see we've done just that. Um, my thoughts we were going to get to 91.75 which is there's the support, and they've just about gotten there. We're at 91.82. Um, I went with the bodies right here. right there. That's where I came up with 91.75. If you look at the previous key area for them to break above, now they traded on both sides here, but this 91.66, uh, even though I like the 91.75, but they may be able to push some stops a little bit below that. So let's go with the 91.66 on the downside for support today. And then resistance. Boy, that looks terrible. And there's resistance right there, 92.35. And moving on to Bitcoin. Well, I shared this yesterday in the in the chat room. Uh, I posted this, and we, I'm just saying that we're basically just stuck here, languishing at the time. I think I, I stated languishing here in the mid thirty nine uh, thousands, basically at thirty nine five hundred. We were actually a little bit lower, and then we're now at thirty nine seven hundred. We've just not gone anywhere. As I mentioned before, there's no change here. The key level is going to be 41,311. That would be higher than we are. But once again, let's pull this out. And it's actually the top of this wick here, which generally will go with the bodies. But you can see we've been pushing against here. We need to get above that wick, and then that'll see if we can go and really break out. That comes in at the 41,311. And on the downside, no changes. 38,813. So you can see here we're just not going anywhere fast. Let's go move into the S&Ps. Well, we did go in and push to new all time highs yesterday, but then we really saw this, uh, not really, but I'm seeing we saw a, a pretty steady, go, a steady pullback. Um, 
not compared to the, what we saw in the NASDAQ when things really came apart, but we did see this good pullback here and we end up actually coming back to this area that we talked about, 4368. Looks like the low may have been like around 70 or 71. Right there, it looks 70 and three quarters. So this is what we've revisited too. So there's the 4368. And if we do break lower, although it looks like it's trying to hold itself, if we uh, do break lower, uh, then it's gonna be 4356, so no changes on that. And on the upside, we'll be looking at the same thing, 4402 on the upside for them to try and break above, which would be that same 4402. Don't really see them getting above that, but that'll be the key right now. We did get travel much higher beyond that yesterday, but like I said, in light of the breakdown that we saw, um, certainly opens the door um, for us to even see further pressure. Now, Fridays have all been basically, like Amanda likes to say, a melt-up Friday uh, in U.S. indices. We'll see. That I wouldn't think that's going to be the case now, especially after what happened with Amazon and also what catalysts is there going to be going forward now to push at these new highs again? You know, earnings is essentially over. I'm talking about the NASDAQ and a lot of those uh, stocks do make a big deal or have a big position themselves in the S&P. So I just think it's going to have, I don't see us doing, um, seeing that melt up. Uh, the market might get a little bit overdone. It could, if it, we start to push higher and people say uh, it's Groundhog Day, but I think uh, even if it does that, that's just going to be an opportunity for people now to get, uh, be able to go and exile the positions. If you look at where we've got, come look at this. <laughs> it would not be unusual to think that we could go on and see a, a good little correction from that. So this is going to remain the same here in the S&Ps. Moving on to the NASDAQ. We definitely saw a good pullback yesterday. You can see here we found support here at this key 14,810 level, revisiting that area again. And they're going to try and bounce off of that. Take me here with the two hour chart. Right now, resistance that appears going to be this 14,905. See if we can't get a little bit closer here. Yeah, that's it, 14,905. And support right now is going to be 14,810. Break below that is really going to open the door for a move down here to 14,679. And we're bouncing. And if you look at the VWAP off of the lows right here, that VWAP is going to come in right there. It's 14,876. Doesn't mean it'll stop it right there because you can see generally with the VWAP, it'll overshoot. But this 14,905 is going to be that first line of, of defense to get past. And the rebound level on that 
will be 14,936. If he were to overshoot it, it'd be pretty tough to a tough road to hoe, I think, to get beyond the 14,936. And if it tries to get there, I think people will try and sell into that. So let's go with 905. 36. Yeah, let's go on and move into it with the gold market. With the gold market, now we had 1829 um, that seemed a bit ambitious. I said, "Hey, I think that's what we're going to go to." Uh, we actually did make it up here. If you look here on this run up here, it got on that first run, 1832, before it trying to pull back a little bit. Did back to 1828, came back up here. So. I thought that we could make it up here and make this run out here just basically on stops because the potential was we could have broken much lower had the dollar come out much stronger or um, Powell would have offered some hint of a suggestion that, hey, yeah, we might be tapering um, purchases, you know, over whatever, over the short haul, or maybe not short haul, but medium haul. He gave none of that. Matter of fact, he tried to reassure the market saying, they would provide guidance well before they were to do that. So really uh, sent the dollar moving lower and opened the door from some stops to be hit in um, the gold market subsequently. Now, if we're looking as to where we're at as far as resistance, well, then we'd be looking at this body right here. Come across. Right there. Oh, that's where we're out of gas. Look at that, 1837.3. Look at that. Hmm. Next one will be right there at 1848. Right. There it is, 1848. And support. Probably going to be that 1812. Remember how many times that we hit that area. There you go, 1812. Moving on to crude oil. NASDAQ trying to continue to push up from that a test of this um, 810. Look at us here. On our hot rebound highs at the moment. So look at me crude oil. So we did say, hey, if we can get a break and hold here, we're going to 73.83. We did get up as high as 73.69 yesterday. Uh, this is still going to hold here. And actually, if you went off of this touch here, that body, that would have been 73.75. So is it right there? You see? So that should be able to be 73.75. I think we can push beyond that. Probably trigger some stops going uh, into the close. Mm. Let's see.
Hmm, 7433. The value area low here. Seventy-three ninety-three. So seventy-three ninety-three, but the real key level is going to be right there at seventy-four thirty-two. So let's go with seventy-three ninety-three, seventy-four thirty-two. Uh, for support, seventy two, seventy nine. Let's take a look here with the NASDAQ. Here's the um, initial balance high from the 28th, and that comes in at 14,923. Actually, it's 14,920, yeah, 1923. Let's take a look at the RTH. This is when they broke them low yesterday. And look where it went to, 14,900. So it kind of was probably a little bit lower. Look, well, no, right there, 14,905. Well, that makes sense then. The 14, we talked about 14,905. And then. Really nothing until, well, here's this pocket 922. So I have to stick with that 905 slash 32, I mean, uh, slash 36. And you can see the low right there. So the 800 held, uh, 810, that should be uh, 873. So nothing I'm driving from that for the NASDAQ beyond, like I said, the 905 to 37.
And once again, looking here at the NASDAQ, there's that 905 we're talking about right there. And if we try and push a little bit higher, here's, you see where we where the market closed and we made this run back up here to 936. That would be an area where if the market reopened in the morning and, and cash is a little bit higher, I mean, before that, the cash open, they may try and go up here and tag this, and then we start to roll back. I think that'd be a good fade for there. So there we have it. And Amir wanted to look at coffee. Let's take a look here. Sure, what's up coming up? Hmm, that's odd. Here we go, coffee. This twenty two. Huh, for some reason it just doesn't want to pull it up, I don't know why. Nope, doesn't want to pull it up. I'm not sure why. Sorry about that, Amir. I'm not sure why it doesn't want to pull it up. It just doesn't. Hang on. We can't find the symbol even though it says it sees it. Just doesn't want to pull it up. I'm not sure why. So sorry about that. I'm not sure why it won't pull it up. I said try and pull up sugar. Uh, let's see. The sugar features there. Since it used to be previously SBU1, now it's SBU21, but same thing. I'm not sure uh, why it's not pulling up the soft, so sorry about that. But uh, there we have it. There's a bias chart, and I'll get that posted. And once again, like I said, on the NASDAQ, we'll see whether or not we can get to 905 and maybe possibly even squeeze up here to 936. And I really just don't see it. I know we always see the Friday melt-up, but... That may be pretty tough. I don't see what the catalyst would be going forward now to try and get this market to move higher. Instead, I think a move higher is going to it's just going to offer offer an opportunity for people to uh, exit out of positions after uh, a phenomenal run. Look at that. But we're going to get that posted. And thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover webinar.